Hello, in this iOS SDK video, we're going to show you how to connect to a URL using Objective C. Very simple stuff, a few prerequisites, make sure you've obviously got Xcode installed and some basic knowledge of Objective C does help. I've got this little URL which you are more than welcome to use. It just simply returns a string saying hello 22. If you want something a bit more complex like sending data to a URL, getting a JSON array and parsing it, we've got separate videos for that, so check that out. It'll be in this playlist as well. So first of all, to get started, we need to create a method which is basically just getting the URL session and it's just handling the session configuration. Once you've got this method all set up, you can start doing more advanced networking and you'll be all good to go. So this is just a bit of setup at the start. So just do dash. And in here you do ns url session asterisk. I was going to call it get url session. And in here you want to do static ns url session asterisk session equals nil static this batch underscore once underscore t i'm just going to call this once token now we're just going to do this batch underscore once this is a method and we're going to pass a reference to our token. So once token, we are now going to put some more. We're just going to separate it on another line. There's going to be quite a bit of code here. So I just need to do this sort of upside down. I mean, the like an arrow pointing upwards. I believe it's called a carrot. You need to put curly braces I'll sort out the formatting after actually semicolon and now ns url session configuration and I'm just going to call it configure configuration got to be able to spell configuration first in here going to put ns url session configuration we're just setting up our variable default session configuration it's just got an error here because we haven't returned anything yet we'll get on to that session equals ns url session equals session with configuration and now just supply the configuration that we just created and now finally do return session and we're all set up we're all good to go now now we can actually start communicating with our url so i'm just going to put it in the view did load method you can trigger it based on some sort of user input like pressing a button or if some condition has been met whatever but i'm just gonna connect to a url and get some data back on load so to do this very very easy do ns mutable url request i'm just going to call it request we're just gonna set this up so we're gonna do ns mutable url request alloc we're just gonna allocate it so memory initialize it semicolon and now we're going to actually set the URL that we want to connect to. So you do request, set URL, and in here, it's going to put nsurl, URL with string. And now you simply put the URL that you want to connect to. I've got the URL right here, which, like I said, just returns a string hello 22. If you're wondering what the number 22 refers to, nothing really. When I was setting up the code, I just fancy put it in two twos. So <laughs> simple as that. NSL URL session data task. We're actually going to connect now because at the moment 
we've got our URL, our request set up with the URL that we want to connect to, but we haven't actually connected yet. I'm going to put asterisk task equals self, and now we call the method that we just created down here. So for me, it was get URL session. Now we do data task with request this one right here actually no no it's this one this is the one we want and for the data task with request we supply the request that we created before and for the completion handler just put the carrot i believe it's called a carrot um, it's going to turn out to be something else and i'm just going to be speaking like a fool most likely ns data asterisk data NS URL response will cover what each one of these variables are in a moment. So let me just actually get this all set up. And finally, the last one is NS error because sometimes errors may occur and we need to handle them and accordingly. And we need to know about them as well because if we don't know about them, we can't handle them. Put couple of curly braces again I'll sort out the formatting after it's just too much hassle now because you'll start bouncing back and forth from in here just put dispatch underscore sync and what we want is dispatch underscore get underscore main underscore q And in here again is one of those carrot blocks. I'm just going to put this on a separate line. Uh, yeah, I'll sort out the formatting, like I said, afterwards. Missing a semicolon here and missing a square bracket here and a semicolon. So this should be all good now. This should still getting an error. So what have I missed out? So technically, Shouldn't get any errors anymore. Oop. See if I remove this. If I just build it, yep. Unused variable, that's fine because we obviously haven't done anything with it. And now what we're going to do is in here, just do ns string actually let me just explain what each one of these variables are so we've connected to our url the request is this right here so you can provide extra parameters as well extra options for sending data that sort of stuff and we'll cover that in a separate video in the completion handler we have ns data which is any data that gets returned so in our case it will be this hello 22 string we have ns url response which is just a response which just shows you the response code we hopefully want 200 because that means everything's gone good show the date time it shows you what sort of server what sort of like language version that sort of stuff so if you're interested in is interested in that you can access that information using response and ns error just shows you if there's an error if everything's a-okay zero if for example you're not connected to the internet i believe it's minus one thousand and nine that'll be a that's actually an extra task that i want you to do once you've got it all working disconnect from the internet and actually try and run this application and see what happens it'll be very interesting so you can understand the sort of errors you will get so let's just get back to it. Ah, oh, today it's not dispatch sync, dispatch async. My bad. I don't know why I put dispatch sync, dispatch async. Let's confirm everything else is correct. Everything else looks all good. So now we're going to do ns log at, I mean, sent at and we're going to print out the data run this okay so let's have a look what's wrong with it it is saying oh need to put an at here 
always get mixed up with that because something like C and C++ is just dual quotation marks. Don't really care about what's going on in the simulator or on our application because we care about what's in the terminal. And we've got no log. So let's have a look. Yeah, it's still saying unused variable task, which is weird. So let's just run through it. So we've got NS URL session data task asterisk task equals self get URL session, which is referring to this method right here. Data task with request, request completion handler, NS data. This, oh, this looks all good to me. Ah, I forgot. Need to do task resume. Put a semicolon right here. And now if we run this, this should now work. So we've got the value null, and it says app transport security has blocked a clear text HTTP resource load since it is insecure. Basically, because we're not using a HTTPS URL, it's saying it's insecure. I know this is my URL. I'm happy with it. I know it's secure, uh, and I'm happy with connecting to it. So you can override it, and you can do this on your application as well by going to info.plist, add in another row, in here, type in app transport security settings, opening this up, adding a row within this, doing allow arbitrary loads, setting the Boolean value to yes. And now, if we run this, okay, there we go, we have our data returned. You might be thinking, oh. We were returning the string hello22. Why have we got this gibberish? It's because we haven't actually passed the data yet. To do that, we're going to pass it into a string. Very simple stuff. NS string. I'm going to call it result equals NS string alloc in it with data. And the data is, well, this data object right here for the encoding just put ns ascii string encoding semicolon now use this variable instead of data now let's run it go back and as you can see we have the string hello 22 so now we've successfully communicated with it all the code is set up let's sort out the formatting if you're having any troubles feel free to check out our github page which has the source code from this video and all the other videos in this series there'll be a link in the description to that as an extra task we recommend that you print out response and error in the NS log here, you can just simply re replace result and see what sort of responses you get for error and response depending on whether you're connected to a URL or not, or whether the URL is correct or incorrect, because it'd be a great way of learning how this works. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our education platform, sonarlearning.co.uk forward slash questions.php. You don't need to remember that because, as usual, we'll post a link in the description. Also, have a nice day and I'll see you next time.